Two Broke Rednecks present... Sid Davis Productions, The Mark of Fear. Apparently this was made when people thought there was a wiener thief on the loose. Cause nothing backs up bogus claims like the police. Well, okay, how many times you've jade walked, Billy? We're still not gonna arrest you until you have a warm place to sleep. Time to troll the strip for young studs. I'm Lieutenant Williams police officer attached to the juvenile division. I'm on my way to Monroe Junior High School to talk to a group of young people. That looks innocent enough, doesn't it? Lots of young people hitchhike. Seems like a good way to get... Lots of luck, people. suckers! But sometimes there are dangers involved that never meet the eye. Let's take the case of Jimmy Barnes. Jimmy played baseball all afternoon and he didn't feel like walking home so he decided to thumb a ride. Jimmy's never seen the Stranger Danger film, so he thought nothing of it. How many times has Jimmy sold that ass? He'd done it a hundred times before, and he didn't think anything was unusual when the drivers struck up a friendly conversation. I have men tell me all the time how big they are. He asked Jimmy if he played baseball in the park often. And if he liked gladiator films. He played a rival group on Friday afternoon. The Stranger was a good listener, too. And it only seemed minutes before they pulled up in front of Jimmy's house. Oh no, not Jimmy's house! When Jimmy got out, the stranger gave him a friendly pat. It's vaguely Jack Nicholson. As he always drove by the park on his way home. And he asked Jimmy for five easy pieces. This is going to look great with the rest of my stolen glove collection. Sure enough, the following day when Jimmy finished playing ball, well, the man was there waiting. And this time with some lube. They stopped at a drive-in and the stranger treated him to a Coke. He turned him on the code with a fiend. He told several off-color jokes, but Jimmy had heard others before, and, well, it made him feel big to so easily win the confidence of an older person. We're helping! We're helping molest you! Want to see what my dog coughed up? By now, they were using first names. Ralph said it was more friendly. Jimmy hadn't enjoyed himself so much in a long time. Not since the time he cracked corn. Then during lunch, Ralph showed him some pornographic pictures. Of his mom. He interested, but well, he was curious. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick. A sickness that was not visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous and contagious. The Ralph is a member of the Tea Party. You see, Ralph was a homosexual, a person who demands an intimate relationship with members of their own sex. But by now, Jimmy felt a fondness for Ralph, and they continued to go places together. Ralph was generous and took Jimmy many interesting places and did many nice things for him. I wish someone did nice things for me. He bought presents and even gave him money. But payments were expected in return. You see, Let's Jimmy play go for hole, Jimmy. Ralph's approach soon enough. When Ralph first asked Jimmy to go fishing alone, he should have discussed it with his parents or teacher. And not the first time he got in the car with Ralph. Finally, Jimmy told his parents, and they reported it to the juvenile authorities. Ralph was arrested, 
and Jimmy was released on probation in the custody. So they give you probation for being molested? No wonder more victims don't come forward. But all homosexuals are not passive. Some resort to violence, as in the case of Mike Merrick. In the heat of competition, no one noticed the man who sat and watched. That cameraman the was a bit creepy. Up, and the others left. Mike decided to stay and practice a little longer. The stranger joined him. He was friendly and, well, it was better than playing alone. And there's nothing strange about a young man playing basketball at the same time. Stay this time and suggested he better leave. Jacques! If he'd like to stay longer, he'd be glad to drive him home when they finished. Sounded great to Mike. Chance to play longer and get a ride home, too. And yet it's still okay to ride with strangers. Finished, the stranger told him he'd make a fine player someday if he got lots of practice. The companionship, the praise, the friendly attitude dispelled any misgivings Mike might have had about going with a stranger. He probably never realized until too late that he was riding in the shadow of death. But sometime that evening, Mike Merrick traded his life for a newspaper headline. So I was lucky to get the shitty end of a deal. Careful, Mike Merritt treated his life for these. Papers ready for Jerry's afternoon delivery. They only casually noticed the two boys that raced by in the afternoon traffic. And they didn't pay much attention to the car that drew up shortly afterwards until the man called them over. Come on over here if you want to get raped. Had two boys been by on bicycles? The boys nodded they had. Could they recognize them if they saw them again? Well, then he guessed he could. Then hop in, the man said. Those are stolen bikes. Without giving it another thought, Denny got in and the car sped away. Jerry to the walked. perv cave! He told many times, if a friend got in a car with a stranger to write down the license number. It didn't seem to apply, but, well, fortunately, he marked it down. When he delivered a paper to Denny's house, he asked his mother if they'd caught the boys that had stolen the bicycles. She replied, I'm looking at one, and began to beat him with a paper. And gave her the paper with the license number. Being a careful parent, she decided to call the police. Jerry she told the police she didn't want Danny's freeloading butt back, and if they found him, they could keep him. Was a good example of how important it is to always get the license number and description of any stranger who takes a young person off alone, no matter what they tell you. Are you the man we see about trading our lives in for a headline? Public restrooms can often be a hangout for the homosexual. Bobby Just ask Larry Craig. Noticed the man who had been in the restroom when they changed. And as it was lady suggested, they take the shortcut under the pier, but the others preferred to take the more traveled way home. Man, the joust thing was less ominous. When Bobby recognized the stranger as the man in the restroom, the shortcut under the pier didn't seem like a good idea at all. It seemed like a great idea. Bobby, where are you going? Don't you want to learn the dance? All, it's more fun to stay with your friends anyway. Bobby had made a wise decision. It may have saved his life. The decision is always yours. Except when it's me telling you to get in the car. The right one. So no matter where you meet a stranger, be careful if they are too friendly, if they try to win your confidence too quickly, and if they become overly personal. Well, they may be a Republican Tea Party member. He may appear normal, and it may be too late when you discover he is mentally ill. 
So keep with your group. Like when he's getting and out of his go car and going into your high school. Unless you have the permission of your parent or teacher. So what did we learn? It's okay to ride with strangers. Dear Bark Rednecks, we don't make bad movies, we make bad movies better.